The orange line is a is one of the um, the uh, subways that are in the, the MBTA, the Mass Bay Transportation Authority subway system. Um, there's a component that goes that was six stations long, and since it was almost a hundred years old, um, it had become antiquated, and they were going to put up a they have put up already a new uh, a new vehicle. Um, we were supposed to document the last days of um, of something that had become very important to the Boston community. Uh, the communities have literally grown up around it for transportation reasons um, and uh, because of uh, nostalgic reasons and everything like that, it's become a very important part uh, of the Boston community. It, once it stops, will no longer exist and people thought that it was very important to document that whole, the, the last part of, the, of its life. The dismantling of Boston's 100-year-old Orange Line was documented over a period of two years by freelancer Lou Jones and four other artist photographers in Boston. Another element in the project that added an entirely different perspective was the teaming of each professional with a student from the Humphrey Occupational Resource Center, a vocational training center for Boston high school students. I was assigned a student and his name was Ziad Aoud. And he was the most uh, advanced of the, of the students um, uh, that were assigned to this project. And he really had a, ver a real aptitude for photography. We worked together in a, f in a fairly sort of peer-like relationship rather than it being anything that was a student teacher. He knew the line as well as I had from a different point of view, but certainly knew it as well as I had. And so there was some instruction in so far as, as the way I see things and, and things like that, but the technique was already his. He had worked for the first year of the project completely in black and white, and when I came on board in the second year, um, I told him that he might think about doing color because that's my my uh, uh, main forte is color. So he got into using color and color slide material and became quite adept at it, almost instantaneous. And uh, so, but it was still a peer-like relationship. I don't think it was quite as instructional in my case as it was with other people. I found that, um, that it's very difficult to photograph in tandem. Uh, photography is really a, uh, an antisocial uh, kind of occupation. And so what I found was a better technique was with Ziad, we, as we were approaching a specific area that we thought we might want to document, we would, as we went there, we would talk a lot about technique, about what he might look for, how I was interested in approaching the job. And, um, and then as we sort of got closer and closer to it, we really would split off. I found that shooting over someone's shoulder or having somebody shoot over my shoulder was distracting and not, and we would get split off and we would approach the project as two different artists. If you give any, any two artists the same event, they'll come up with different uh, uh, photographs. And uh, this was a way we sort of built that in. In terms of the benefits for Ziad, I think it had a lot to do with laying some very serious groundwork for someone who's really going to go on into photography. This was the, f the, the formative stages of that part of it. He knew a lot about what he was doing, but this was experience, but experience in a concentrated form. This is a project that had a beginning and an end and was supposed to be like a narrative. Students that are just beginning in the photography are usually very random, but this was a case where he had a real project. And I think that the real value had to do with concentrating for a two-year period on the photo essay. Photography has a tremendous responsibility, I think. It's the 
one of the few mediums, if not the only one, where we can really, with very little effort, and very little expense, document um, a, a life or an area or something. Um, consequently, with a, a neighborhood that's so concentrated like this, we were supposed to, as artists here, not just as photojournalists, but as artists, record an environment. 10 years from now, 25 years from now, 50 years from now, we're dead. And people are going to look back and sort of see what life was like in 1987, 86. And we have looked at the photographs from a time before from when they were building it and many years after that and they have a tremendous fascination for us as photographers and we don't see that yet but our photographs will go on many years from now and hopefully have that same kind of impact and that will be added to the ones that we already have from the past and now I think that there's a serious um, statement being made there and people will be able to see what what they looked like and what their ancestors looked like and there's a great fascination I'm finding amazing fascination for that